Hey, we're Flick and Joe, and this is our dog, Walter. In 2022, we made the crazy decision to quit our full-time jobs, pack up our lives, and move aboard our blue water sailing boat. We spent many months refitting her and getting her ready for our plans until one day we actually did it. We cast off the lines, we pointed her south, and off we went. We've now sailed over a thousand nautical miles, dodging orcas, yes, actually, and most of the rocks along the way. Join us for the beautiful, quite stressful but endlessly eventful life that is full-time living aboard. In this week's episode, we strip back the coolant water pump and find an engine full of rust and what looks like sand. Today we've got to do some engine maintenance. We're here now, we're chilling in Morocco for three months because we've got to be here to reset our Schengen visa. We've got a lot of boat jobs to do, so that's fine to have some downtime whilst the weather's not very nice anyway. Sort of, we're in the winter months now. One of the jobs I need to do is replace the coolant water pump. You'll remember from an earlier video that I've already done this, but it has failed. So apparently there is a, like, a ceramic bearing on the shaft that drives the water pump and that ceramic bearing has failed so we're basically leaking coolant very slowly into the engine bilge. I spoke to the guys who sold at me and they said they spoke to their manufacturer and apparently <clears throat> if your engine has got any sort of rust, sediment, scale, anything in there then this can lead to the failure of that bearing shaft seal. I know our engine, the inside of our engine, does have quite a lot of brown sort of crud in there. So whether that's the reason or not, I don't know. But these guys offered to replace the water pump free of charge under warranty because we've only had this current one installed for about three months and it's failed. The engine's not that cruddy inside that it fails in three months. But anyway, they, they think that it might be the bearing, but they obviously it's very hard to prove that. So they said they'd replace it as a gesture of goodwill. But if it breaks again, then it's definitely our fault. It must be the crud in our engine. So today's job is to try and properly flush out the engine. So I've got a few bottles of, this is a, just a branded uh, radiator flush. Hopefully, yeah, this gets rid of a lot of the crud. I mean, we did this last time when we took off the old water pump you could see inside the engine block and around the cylinders, so the water jacket basically, and it was still pretty brown and cruddy in there. And then I'm going to take the water pump off, hook up hose pipe, and I'm gonna f stick a hose pipe inside that water jacket and make sure it's properly flushed out of all the gunk and um, rust and things like that. So, wish me luck. Step one, which I've already started, to drain off the old coolant. Now I'm going to pour this stuff in with some water and we're going to run the engine at temperature and try and get it clean and sparkly. Drained off the coolant, run the engine, got it really hot. Drained off the flush, radiator flush stuff. Um, I've not flushed the engine yet with any hose pipe water or anything like that. I've just just drained it off. And then I've siphoned the coolant into some bottles because you can't dispose of coolant anywhere in Morocco that isn't basically just dumping it down a drain. So it's in there in an old oil container. But look at this. This is the gunk from inside the engine block. I don't know if you can see whether it gets some light on it. But, it almost looks like it's... Thank you, Walter. It almost... It, it's like sand. I don't know if it's... Uh, it's like lime scale deposits. I don't know. But loads of it. It's like really fine sand. So that's probably not going to be helping a shaft bearing. I don't, that's certainly not going to be helping it. 
and that's without that's just draining the coolant with this flush stuff it's not even uh, this isn't even hooking a hose pipe up to it to flush out stuff yet but yeah there's a lot of stuff going on there I don't really know what it is is it just limescale or is, it can't actually be sand how could there be sand in the engine block this is the second bucket of flushed water so I've hooked a hose pipe up to this is our this is um, the loop for our hot water tank it goes up there into that lazarette locker and then it comes back down this white pipe through here down and out through here this is a second bucket full of water so it's much cleaner it's almost water colored now at this point this is just this is like 99 percent water i'm gonna do this a couple more times and then I've got to start taking off all of the pulley assembly because to get access to the water pump, well, this is the water pump behind here driven by this pulley. So I've got to take off the timing belt case, the timing belt, the pulleys that are inside here. I've got to strip the front end of this engine off so I can get access to this guy back here, which is the water pump. Once I take that off, I can then see inside the cylinder. Well, I can see inside the block and you'll be able to see hopefully that the cylinders the water jacket looks a lot cleaner than it did in our prior video which if you've seen it was pretty orange and once i have it off i'm gonna hopefully be able to flush this and i can stick the hose pipe in here as a big hole and i can really clean it out This is just from the bucket of the clean water in it and you can see I've st still, um, still sand here and that's that's coming out of the engine block still and flushing the pipes. I promise I'm cleaning the bucket out in between. I probably need to flush it a few more times. Look at that. That is where we happen to turn the engine off. What an amazing coincidence. We've literally turned it off at the TDI point. So this is where all the cogs have to be lined up to keep the engine in timing. Once I take this belt off, these cogs could move out of alignment. And if we do that, then the engine loses its very precise timing. So. There are some little yellow markers here, but actually I'll show you because we have some metal pins, basically drill bits that go in these holes here, which make sure that the engine stays in alignment. And there's some other spots as well to put the pins. So the pin goes down there in that hole that keeps the camshaft in place. You get two pins in here, and that keeps the fuel pump in alignment. To keep the crankshaft in alignment, we have a pin that goes up, or the back of the engine over there, it sort of tucks in behind the oil pump. It's a bit fiddly to get to. I'm not even gonna bother trying to record that one. One pin goes in there, one in there. It aligns up with the hole at the back. One goes in there too, and that, make sure that that is aligned. You have to be really careful doing this because you don't want to snap these drill bits in the engine block, otherwise you're in a spot of bother. And then I've got to do the final one, which is the crankshaft. Now that I've got all my pins in, I can loosen off this uh, tensioner pulley, which then means I can get the timing belt off. Ouchie. 
And then we can take off this pulley. Now I've got the pulleys off, I can take off the timing bell, which is very easy. Next step is to take off the the back of the timing belt case, this black stuff, which has just got a few hex head bolts on there. I need to do that so I can get to the bolts for the water pump. So now we have access to the water pump. I'll show you where it's been leaking, right? So as you can see is this brown crud here, which is where it's been leaking out of the water pump. Where is it coming from specifically is this tiny little weep hole here, which is for, well, it's where the shaft is. And apparently there's a bearing that's um, failed between the water pump itself and the shaft. So water is coming out through the shaft, out through the weep hole. And then it's sort of tracking down here, down here. Now we've got to, we're going to take off these bolts for the water pump, loosen these rubbers, rubber hoses, and we should be able to get this pump off. As I take these bolts off, I'm going to have to get a piece of cardboard and mark out exactly where, which bolt goes where, because these bolts are different lengths top, bottom, just roughly with some holes that mirrors where the bolts came from. Stick your bolt straight in your piece of cardboard and then you can be sure that you're going to put them back in the right place. See, that's a really tiny bolt. Whereas the other one I just took out is a lot longer. So I've just got to loosen off these hoses to come off. Oh, here we go. So, here we go. I mean, that's good coloured water coming out of the engine block now. This is, we have flushed it earlier. That's just, yeah, clear water. So I'm happy with that. Try and wiggle these hoses off. This is the pump. It's in really good nick, as you can see the, the actual, whatever, impeller, propeller, imp, it's an impeller. It's in good nick. I think maybe it was leaking out of here, out the bottom as well. You see how the gasket here is is uh, got this rusty stuff on it as well. It was definitely leaking out of the shaft weep hole as well. You can see where it's running down, but possibly it's leaking out of here as well, which made it look worse than it was. This is well, the, what the cylinder looks like. This is this round thing is a cylinder, and you can see like it's got. A a good chunk of rust on it, so I'm, I just don't know what I can do about this. It's not actually that bad. Um, I think I can see sand sediment in there, so let's get the hose pipe on and let's really flush this out and see if we can make it look a bit better. I don't know what we can do about this rust type color, it comes off like that. So I guess I put more flush stuff through. Let's see what the hose pipe does for now.
I'd push that hose pipe as deep into the water jacket around the cylinders as I could. The aim here was to flush out any sediment and lime scale that would be sat at the bottom and otherwise never escape when the coolant was flowing through the engine. Yes, you are correct in thinking that we are just filling up our engine bilge with water. But at this point in the process, I turned on the automatic bilge pump. There was no coolant left in the engine at this point, just fresh water, and I was content in pumping it overboard. Once I felt like we'd done all we could do, I started to rebuild the front of the engine so that we could then go for round two of radiator flush, and this time leave it in for much longer, around three to four hours. This turned into a bit of an ordeal yesterday because I wanted to put the timing belt on to flush the engine properly, let the engine run again with the flush on, uh, flush in the engine. But anyway, it turned into a massive ordeal because I couldn't get the timing belt back on. It was so annoying. I just, I've, I've taken the timing belt on and off so many times now for various things and, um, yeah, I just couldn't get it back on. And then when I did get it back on, it was, I'd managed, I'd lost alignment. Like I tried to take one of the pins out, which meant that the engine had lost its timing and then it wouldn't start. It was just letting out plumes of white smoke because it was trying to fire up at the wrong time. So anyway, finally got it on last night and then I flushed the engine with the water because I had to get the acid the radiator flush out of the engine. I can't leave it in there for overnight because it's going to dissolve the engine. <laughs> it's not going to be good for it. So I got that out. Now I need to take the water pump off today and then we can stick the hose pipe in there again, give it a proper good flush and put the new water pump on. This is as good as we can get because we've run out of radiator flush stuff now. And to be honest, I'm kind of scared of flushing it too much with this acid stuff because this is an old engine block and there's probably some thin sections, especially around the head, the uh, coolant tank. Um, and I really don't want to go and make more damage, do more harm than is good. So yeah, today we're gonna finally replace this pump. So let's get to it. I've got to get my pins back in the engine. So I'm just going to hand crank it to my yellow markers, which are these things here. I know that that means it's in alignment now. I can put these pins in. That one's in. And the one hidden at the flywheel. I'm getting pretty slick at taking apart the front end of this engine now. Timing belt pulley tensioner first, followed by the timing belt pulley, remove the timing belt, and then finally the coolant water pump. This pump is leaking already which is sign of a weak seal which is good because we already took it off once so it should just hopefully wiggle that's quite good we've already taken this off once so ta-da but I think actually after flushing it with the engine stuff, it looks a lot better. It looks a lot, uh, a lot better, these cylinders. It's a lot less of the deposits. Um, 
I'm going to get the hose pipe in there. There's a little buildup of sandy gunk there, so we're going to flush it out good and proper. Okay! Okay, more! You can put it up to full! Yeah, more, more, more! All the way! I gave the engine one final deep flush with the hose pipe to get out any remaining sediment that was stuck down there. This was really the best that I could do with the materials we had at hand. The coolant header tank and the engine water jacket were by no means perfect. There was definitely still some lime scale and sediment in places, but it was a big improvement on what we had. We've never had an overheating problem, so I'm not overly concerned about the scale, other than it apparently damaged the original other than it apparently damaged the coolant pump. I smeared gasket sealant over the face of the engine block and the brand new coolant pump and I set to work tightening the bolts, reassembling the front end of the engine. Okay, new pump on, hose is clamped, thermostat replaced. Oh, I didn't film any of that earlier. I took out the heat exchanger and the tubes and basically stuck a hose pipe inside this tank as well to try and flush it out. There's still quite a lot of calcium deposits in there, but hopefully I've got rid of most of them. Timing belt back on. Take my pins out. One, two, three. Always count your pins. You don't want them snapping off inside the engine block. It's three. And and to get the fourth one out. It's all four pins out, timing belt on. I need to put the water pulley back on. Alternator belt back on. I've put coolant in here and we should be good to go. This is the stuff that's inside our, has been inside our coolant system. It's like lime scale. I don't know, you can pick it up and you can crunch it and it sort of turns into just sediment. I think it's scale, lime scale deposits. Look, it's, it's so much of it. I've probably got like, I don't know, five, ten tablespoons of this out just from flushing the coolant system. And this is probably why the shaft seal failed on the old one, I don't know. But this stuff isn't floating around because it's heavy. It sort of sits in the bottom of the tank, so I'm still not 100% sure why our pump failed. But either way, this is not going to be helping the situation, so I think it's a good thing that we've done to get rid of this. I pulled together four clips here showing the progress on descaling the engine. The first clip you can see shows us the inside of the water jacket all the way back in episode 4. I put a link to that video in the top right corner of the screen. Then we have three clips of the progress we made from the multiple radiator chemical flushes and also the hose pipe flushes. I think it is much better than it was, but definitely not perfect. Do we have any engine experts out there? Is this typical for the inside of an engine water jacket? This engine is, I expect, 30 plus years old, so is this normal? Should I do another round of descaling at some point, or should I just leave it be? <laughs> Assuming the coolant pump doesn't start leaking again, I'll probably leave it be. But I'm really keen to hear what other people's experiences are 